If you haven't subscribed already, ring that bell to get notified when new movies are posted. Hey, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we try to bring you new videos every single week on smart home, focus on the Apple HomeKit, Amazon, Google Home, a little home assistant now and then. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if you would like to be notified when new videos are posted. Today, this is going to be video two of two, where the first video we looked at the Onvis motion sensor. So you guys can go check that out now if you want. I'll put a link up above. And uh, in this video, we're going to look at how to use that motion sensor in your Apple HomeKit home to tie together devices from a bunch of different manufacturers. So you ready? Let's get started. So in an effort to keep the on this motion sensor review a little bit shorter, I broke this out into a separate video. I hope that's okay with you guys. In this video, we're going to look at automating a multi-vendor home kit scene together. So we're going to be using the on this motion sensor with the LifeX mini bulb, an iHapper color bulb, a vocal link color bulb, and a Sylvania color bulb. So three out of these, um, Devices are Wi-Fi, being the LifeX, the iHapper, and the Vocal Link, and two of them are Bluetooth, being the Onvis and the Sylvania. And the beautiful thing about this is through Apple HomeKit and the way that they've given us this ecosystem to abstract kind of vendor-specific details, all of these devices are just going to seamlessly work together as if they were from the same company. That's what Apple HomeKit gives us. So before we get into setting this up, let's look at what the final product is going to do for us. So here we are in a dark room and there we go. Look at that. Lights just turn themselves on. So if we get a little closer here, you can see that I've got uh, light bulbs that they all look kind of differently. Um, in the final product, I ended up switching out to Sylvania and going with a Philips Hue. We've got Vocal Link, we've got Life X, we've got iHapper in there. And of course, tying them all together, the Onvis. Uh, motion sensor right there in all its glory. So let's take a look at how we set this up. So one thing I want to show you guys quickly is how you can integrate this into your house. So for instance, I've got a Sylvania color bulb here, right? You can see Sylvania LED Vance, right? I have got a Life X Mini, Life X, and I also have a iHapper color light, uh, which that review will be posting soon. So you can see three different lights from three different vendors. And you know what? Let's let's even include maybe the vocal link here, right? So the vocal link, as, again, color light bulb, um, the LinkWise application, we could go over to that. So I am going to have this motion sensor turn all of those on together, right? So I have this other lamp in here which is a Ikea lamp, but this one's not color. So when I want to do the grouping, and the Lutron as well is in color, I don't want to include the lights that are not color because that's actually going to give me the lowest common denominator from a group standpoint. It's going to make it basically so that when I tap on it to control it, I'm only going to be able to control the brightness, not the colors as well, which is what I want to do. So let's quickly go through um, on the Onvis motion sensor and we're going to make sure that all the names are right because the temperature sensor, I like to put the name of the product in front of it so I can kind of, uh, you know, when you got a lot of these things in your place, you want to have a hint as to which one is giving you what kind of data, right? So we're calling this motion sensor, Onvis humidity, Onvis temperature, right? Naming conventions, I cannot stress how important those are. So although you can use automations to control accessories directly, personally, I like to put them in scenes. It's going to make troubleshooting a lot easier for you. And it's also going to make your operations easier if you buy another light and you just want to have it controlled in the same scene. Um, and that doesn't actually restrict you from like changing lights to different colors, which is kind of nice. So if we're going to go down here in the bottom and find the Tristan's room group, which uh, I've got set up, and then I'm just going to pick the lights. I uh, I think these are the ones that I want. Uh, there's actually, I think, one extra one in here. So we'll just grab the five of these for now. One of these is not a colored light. So we'll we'll figure that out afterwards. And I want to put these all into a group. So you can see right now, I could say, you know, turn them on, turn them off. And I have individual control in the scene. I can also tap on them uh, and go in, click even on the color, and say, for this particular light, when the scene activates, I would like the color blue to come up. Right. If I want to pick one of my other lights, maybe the Sylvania and say, maybe I don't want the color blue. Maybe I'd rather have a purple. Right. And so on and so on. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility for this 
for any individual scene to tune every one of your lights exactly the way you want it. So if I look at this guy here, oh, look at that. There's no color button. That would be the IKEA, right? So of course, it's not a color light. Of course, there are no color controls. So I am going to want to pull that out eventually. But first, let's get through uh, this and then we can test the scene if we want. Right, so all those are good things. I can include it in favorites, which will put it on the home, the, the front tab. Even if you don't click that button though, the scene will be available to this room, as you can see up above, because it applies to devices in this room. If I had chosen devices across multiple rooms, that scene title would be in, in both of those rooms. Right, so I'm gonna say Tristan's motion on lights here, because this particular scene, I am going to tie to the Onvis motion sensor. Uh, let's make it a little grammatically correct. Tristan's lights motion on. Maybe not grammatically correct, but at least makes sense in my head. So I tapped on that at the top, and you will then see at the bottom that all those lights, the ones that weren't already on, are now on. And uh, I can confirm to you, because I'm sitting in the room, that the lights went the color they su were supposed to go. So once you've got that scene tuned to whatever your personal desire is, we're going to go over the automations, which again, automations requires a home hub. So you're going to need the Apple Home Pod, an iPad in home hub mode, or an Apple TV. And we're going to go down to the room wherever we put this thing. So that would be this Tristan's room in my case. And we're going to go find the motion sensor here. So you can see, again, I'm doing this in the Apple Home app. You could do this in any of the other apps. And if you wanted to, you could also trigger on things like air quality, uh, temperature, those kinds of things. You can't do that in the native Apple Home app, though. So we're going to say when this room sensor detects motion any time of day, and if I want, I can restrict it, uh, we're going to kick off that scene. So let's go ahead and restrict it a little bit and say, uh, maybe I only want this to happen during daylight hours uh, after after my son gets home from school, right? So between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., uh, that's when I want these lights to kick on. There we go. And I could also do that based on people as well, assuming they've actually got a iOS device and they're logged in and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're not going to worry about that now. So now what we want to do, like I said, although we could do this by accessories, I always prefer to do this by scenes. It just, it's operationally, I found it's way, way simpler in the long run to be able to figure out what is kicking off. There's nothing worse than trying to troubleshoot um, a, a device because you have no idea what automation is getting kicked off. If you see the scene active, you know that was the scene. And of course, in the motion detected scene, uh, the automation, we can also automatically turn it off remediate it after a uh, given period. So although the Apple Home app only allows you between one and 60 minutes, some of the other applications can also do better than that. But I will leave that to you guys to investigate it. So again, let's look at this, make sure it's enabled successfully. There we go. And when motion is detected between four to 8 p.m., Tristan's lights motion on scene will activate and will turn itself off after 30 minutes so we don't have to worry about running around trying to, to uh, shut off lights. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the scene off which should turn all of the light bulbs off in that scene. Uh, you can see here the Sylvania which is a Bluetooth bulb not always the quickest to respond. Um, definitely Zigbee and Wi-Fi bulbs are a little quicker, but Zigbee does have its place. It's great if you're traveling and you just want a color, colored light in your hotel room. So we'll make sure these are all off so we can test the motion sensor here and see whether or not our scene is going to work. So that one that's triggered right now is actually the Echobee occupancy sensor. Oh, look at that. The Onvis motion sensor turned on and all the lights turned on. The Sylvania, which is the Bluetooth light, was the last, which is what we would kind of expect. Um, all the other lights here are either Zigbee or Wi-Fi based. So pretty cool. So fast forward in a few weeks, uh, I came back and re-edited this video because, well, things didn't turn out the way I originally thought, because that's sometimes how things work. I ended up uh, pulling out the Sylvania and putting in a uh, Philips Hue. So the final automation here was iHapper, Philips Hue light bulb, uh, Zigbee, so the iHapper's Wi-Fi, um, the LifeX Mini, I believe, is the next in line, as well as, of course, the Vocal Link. L1. 
right? So uh, four different light bulbs from four different vendors, all pulled together, uh, all triggered using the Onvis motion sensor. And the really nice thing is, is the only thing I had to do to modify this, this is why scenes are great, is I had to go into the scene and just modify the scene, add in the new accessories. That was it, that simple, right? That's it, that's all. Let's take a look again at what the final product looked like. Lights are off, motion sensed, lights are on, beautiful colors. I can't wait for my son to see what his new room looks like. That's really it. That's the beauty of HomeKit. That ties everything together like that. Super easy, consistent experience across all your manufacturers. You guys got any questions? Definitely let me know below. If you've got suggestions, you think you have a better way of doing it, definitely know. let me know that as well. Uh, I always love to learn. See you guys soon.